All right, so here's what we're going to do. Three moves to becoming a recruiting machine, which are the three moves that really describe our, the last 30 years of history, but I want to give it to you in three moves, right? So number one, if you want to become a recruiting machine, I think, is anybody here besides me, the whole idea of becoming a big recruiting machine, that's kind of cool. Say yes. Make sure, that, say yes so that I know you're awake and alive and well. Yeah, what do you have to lose if what you're doing isn't working? You have nothing to lose. Remember that. Just think of Elon Musk when he started his rockets. The NASA would not support him. They wouldn't even give him a place to try to launch them. He had to go to the Mariana Islands. And he decided, well, you know, we should build the rockets better and cheaper and have them reusable. Nobody had ever done that before. Are you ready to think out of the box of what they've told you and what you've told yourself that maybe there's a way to do this, but you're going to have to think different? Because if you don't think different, you will not do different. And if you don't do different, you won't have different results. Have I sold you on that? Has everybody got that? All right. Because it's going to be crazy. Get ready to hold on to your stuff. So if this is the first time we've met, some of you I know are probably new to me, never heard of me, who's this crazy lady? So I'm going to tell you that story that started this off. And it was some years ago, we were, my, one of the first business I ever built like this was a water filter company. Some of you know it if you've been around long enough. And I was a few months in and I had a 39 reps that had come in on the big package, which was at that time, $5,000, $5,000 worth of water filters or air filters, primarily water. And they had all registered to come to a big day-long special training that I was giving, 39, okay? People that had done that. And on the day of seven people showed up, that was it. So I did the event and then I called my sponsor because of course you train who comes, right? Because those are, you never know what's gonna happen to those people, they're the ones. And so I called my sponsor and she says, she's this wonderful lady, we're friends to this day um, and she said, oh, she said, Kim, most everybody quits in this business. That's how it is. And it's like, it's a volunteer army. That's what she said. And I told her, well, why would you be in a business where everybody, where you know almost everybody's going to quit? I mean, I just couldn't even find it. Why would you get into a business where most people quit? And she said, well, that's a volunteer army. So I told her, well, I have a volunteer army of real estate agents and they've never quit. And I think I would rather just stay with that deal than this one. At least my people stay and I have to recruit them too. And I have to train them. I do everything that we're doing here. I ran newspaper ads, the whole thing. And, but my people are here and these people are not. And if that's what it means to be in this industry, you know, I'm out of here. <laughs> and so she says, Right? Why would you do a business where almost everybody quits? Has everybody, anybody besides me ever felt like this? Why are you doing this when everybody quits? We have any, any people like me here? Let me see here if we do. I might be the only one. Right? Oh, you got. Oh, yes. Yeah, right? So, so like, right, right. Who, who needs that? Mm -hmm. So she says, she's she a very clever lady. You know, she's kind of like the Yoda here. So she says, well, okay. Kim. Kim, yeah, okay. She goes, would you try one thing before you quit? Because of course I understand why you want to quit. <laughs> Since you just told me this stupid thing, right? So it's like, okay. She said, whatever you're doing to recruit your real estate agents, so why don't you try that for your network marketing reps and see what happens? Are you with me? Everybody got this? Everybody see what we're doing here? <clears throat> this was the question, right? Her little Yoda. Woohoo! Why don't you try that? So I thought, okay, so what would I do to make that happen? And so I decided I would try that before I quit, just because it was such a good question. And what did I do? I had the same real estate agents. If you've ever been a broker, you ought to know agents are all volunteers. Most of the time they don't show up. If it's hard, they don't show up. And, you know, the, but my people were there and I had to recruit them and train them and get a percent of what they did. So I thought, well, maybe, you know, I should look to see what I had done for the water filter agent business and the real estate business. So my business was commercial real estate leasing. We leased ground space retail and we leased office spaces to people like, you know, 
metropolitan life and places like that. That's what we did. We did good money doing that. And in those days, we ran newspaper ads in the classified sections of the newspapers. Okay. Anybody remember newspapers here? Somebody old enough to remember a newspaper? Oh, how quaint. You got that? We got some newspaper rememberers. They're still papers today, but they're you know not like they used to be. So what I did is I compared the ads. I had run ads for my real estate agents, and I had run ads for the water filter reps, you know, the reps and network marketing reps, because I was looking for reps recruiting, remember? That's what we're talking about here. And so I compared the ads and I made a couple of examples to show you what the what the gist of the ads were. That was shock number one. I compared the ads. Okay. So they were totally different. The network marketing ad, remember, we were looking for recruits. And then the real estate ad. Who'd like to see what the ad said? Oh, a bunch of them. <laughs> show, show. Show, show, show. Okay, cool. Show, show, show. Yeah, I was really like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. After I saw it, of course. And I had done it myself, completely unaware. Okay, so the network marketing ad basically said 10000 a month, need help, no experience necessary, health field. This was the gist of the ad which I had gotten from my upline, who is today and was then the number one earner in the company. Took it. So here, Kim, here's the ad to run. Okay, great. That's the ad he ran. See, so had a lot of people ran. That was it. 10000 a month, need help, no experience necessary, health field, 800, blah, 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 blah. So that's what I ran. And that's what got me about three dozen, 38, 39 of these guys who came in for those initial orders of $5,000 worth of water filters. Now that company had many larger orders, had 25,000, 100,000, but at that time, the standard order was somebody came in with a $5,000 wholesale order. So everybody got that? Make sure we are on the same page here. Are, with, are we good? All right. So then I looked at the real estate ad. And I don't have the exact ad here. It's in a couple of other books that I have, but I'll give you the gist so you know what the difference was. Are you with me? Let's see here. Who's got it together? I want to see who's going to get this first. Okay. All right. Here's the first line of the real estate. Notice this ad. 10000 per month. Need help. No experience necessary. Health field. Now, how many of you think that's probably a pretty good ad? We'd get a lot of people. It's okay. I'm not going to shame you. Don't worry. So yeah, yeah, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Give me that, right? You would, you right? So here's what I had for the real estate ad. Wanted. Top leasing agent. Okay. Next. Knows commercial district, like the back of hand, like words to that effect. No, got to know every single street alley in the financial district, like I did. Every street, every corner, everything. That's why we were really good. We made a lot of money doing that because we were really good at what we did. We didn't show up once a week. We were there. No, we knew every brick on every side street that was there. Because that's what it takes to be in the commercial business if you if you want to make a lot of money. Okay. So I asked for uh a top leasing agent who knows the commercial district like the back of his hand and who knows about desirable unlisted properties. Now, you know, in the real estate business, people typically represent what they call the sellers or the people who are leasing space. And of course, you know, we're weird. So we represented the other people. We represented everybody who was looking. And in most cases, the, the um, sellers paid us but we made arrangements. Most of our deals were made with properties that were not on the market. So we would find what we knew, clients like McDonald's and Metropolitan Life, what kind of properties and locations they would want. And we would make deals with the sellers to pay us whatever commission we wanted, should we bring somebody at this sum that they, were, that they would accept. So most of the properties we ever leased uh, were never on the market. Because that is how we did it, see? And the last deal we did, I think the commission was like $500,000 because it was a like a 50-year lease with the equivalent of a, um, 
um, you know, what do you call those big warehouses? I forget now, but um, you know, one of these big, like one of the, you know, like the Sa Sa Sam's store, the, the, those, these big giant hundred thousand square foot space, Costco like that. Costco. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's how we did our work, whether it was a tiny space or a big space. So everybody see that? So we, I wanted somebody who would, who was, saw themselves as a top leasing agent. You see that? Knows the commercial district like the back of their hand. Knows about desirable unlisted properties. So that was move number one. Who can tell me what the first move was based on comparing the ad that I ran for real estate compared to the ad that I ran for the network marketing uh, representatives? Can anybody tell me? What do you see here? One is saying you became more targeted, specific qualifications, okay. quality of person, the qualifying attributes. Okay. Yeah. So move number one really was to go from, um, whoop, let's see, was to go from, let me just delete this one, was to go from a really, I would say, offering the moon. Mm -hmm to anyone with no experience necessary to, from that to saying, I want a top leasing agent. Mm -hmm. I want somebody who knows this and knows that and knows about this and that and the other, right? So there's specific skills that I wanted. Why? Because I want to be the top leasing agent in my town and in my state. And if I just get a bunch of hoo-hahs who don't know anything, if I were to say real estate ad, make a whole lot of, I could say all oh, the same thing, 10,000 per month, need help, no experience necessary, real estate field. And have people come in by the hundreds per day, probably looking to see how they could make 10 grand a month doing real estate. But see, I didn't want those people. I didn't want to have to be a filter for all of those people. Do you see that? So I said, I want a top leasing agent. Who, do you think somebody's going to come who's never done leasing before? Is someone going to apply to this gig who's never done leasing before? Yes or no? No. They didn't. Now you're going to go, some of you are going to go, well, everybody needs a chance. Everybody could do network marketing. And my mother-in-law, she needs money. And would you deny her? Well, it depends how you want to build. If you want to build fast, do you want the best people who already know how to help you? Or do you want to start with the people who don't know anything and you barely know anything and you think you're going to go fast? What do you think? Ask yourself. Because a lot of people say, well, Kim, there are all these people who, you know, what about those people? I want to build fast. If you want to build fast, do you want to ask for anybody or people who already know how? When Elon started his SpaceX company, do you think he asked for people who were interested and had seen a lot of movies about outer space and gone to Mars and everybody come because you get to be part of Occupy Mars? Or do you think he went to the best schools like Stanford and Caltech and UCLA and uh, Harvard and Yale and all these places to ask for the top software engineers who would work for the least pay with a mission of occupying Mars someday. What do you think got him from SpaceX when he was the only one there to today being the top space company in the world? Was it experienced people that brought him there and now he can be, if he wants to be a church, he's got so much money? Or is it bringing all the weaklings in who don't have anything? What's the choice here? What are you going to bring in if you want to go fast? The people who know how or the people who don't? First. First. We're talking first when you start. Okay. Remember, the church can be a charity because they have money. If you don't have money, how are you going to be a charity? Right? All right. So that led us to move number one. Ask for whom we wanted. This is called marketing, but I'm not going to call it marketing. Don't want to use any fancy jargon. We just asked for whom we wanted. Now, notice, notice, for those of you that are extra tuned in, stay sober for this part. We said things like, we want a key player for the real estate ad. We changed our ad. 
I didn't run that stupid ad anymore asking for anybody to take 10 grand a month. We asked for people and it included top leasing agent, key player, people, somebody who loves public speaking. That was part of our ad. Another one was they've owned their own business before. Oh, okay, here. Well then, key player, loves public speaking, has owned their own business before. Why would I want that? Why do I want a key player? I want a top leasing agent. I want to grow fast. They love public speaking. Why would I want that? Well, if a person is, oh my God, do I have to talk to somebody who, how good of a presenter are they going to be? How good are they going to be at talking to people about what they love? So would you rather have two or three people on your team who love to public speak and talk about what they're doing? Or you want to have somebody who's so scared they can't lead a silent prayer, like they used to say, right? Who do you want on your team so you can build it fast? The wieners or the people who know how? Right? It's a question of you. You can decide. You can take as long as you want. Owned a business before. That was another thing we said. Why? I want people that have owned a business before because they know there are risks. If you've never done a business, it'll take you way longer. Why? Because you're going to go, well, do I have to spend money? You do. Oh, I don't want to spend money. You're just taking my money. That's what people act like who've never been in business. People like Elon or Steve Jobs. Why do you think public companies go public? to raise money. Why? Because they don't have it. And they're going to take that money and use it and build stuff and make the shareholders, they hope, rich and themselves richer. Why? Because they make stuff the world wants and has been waiting for. Are you with me? Okay. So these are things that you want to keep in mind here. (laughs) So move one. We learned how to call out our audience. Now, there are two kinds of audiences we called out. One is people who could help us achieve our mission. In the real estate, I wanted top leasing agents. I didn't want somebody who just got their license and didn't know up from down, had never been to the city, didn't know a commercial district from a, a nice neighborhood, right? So we want people who can help us achieve our mission. In our industry, those are called recruiters, builders, people who know how to find people, talk to people, and know how to go through those numbers because that's what it's going to be. So we want those. What's the other kind of person we want? People that we could help with our products. So those are the two. We had to call out our audience. So we call out people who could help us achieve our mission. Not want to, can. Have the skills, the experience, the knowledge. Don't cry, everybody says, when somebody says no. Or people that we could help. Like, for example, we're um, running an experimental program right now that we just started and it helps people get rid of aches and pains, evaporate aches and pains in 10 or 12 seconds without drugs, without pain meds. And why does anybody care? Well, for people who don't want to be on pain meds because they know it can harm your liver, your kidneys, makes you drowsy, you know, blah, 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 blah. They might want to have an alternative that is not a, a pain med that has all these harmful side effects. So we can help people would like to get off daily pain meds because of the side effects with this particular product because it gets you off the pain meds a lot of them and instead you get pain relief with something that's based on a completely different science you know basically with all of your meridians and works wonders for people so by the way i didn't know this um vic told me the other day that we just won a trip a fully paid trip with travel and all that to aruba we had no idea. Somebody had to email us and say, oh, girl, she won this trip. Really? Oh, cool. That's nice. Okay. Because we are, we believe in the philosophy of alternatives to daily medication. And I'll show you at the end one of the things. Is everybody with me so far? We got it? So when you do this calling, remember, I, I'm a big believer in this. Whether you believe in the Bible or not, doesn't matter at all. It has marvelous stories and principles for life. And for some of you who, you know, believe more or less than others, the principles are wonderful. And they're throughout religions of the world. But my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. If you believe that, that you have something that you can help people with and you have a movement that you want to build whether, and it's thousands and thousands of distributors, you know, who are in your business and network of giant network of distributors around the world, then you learn that your sheep will hear your voice. 
even if we're in the same company, my sheep will hear my voice. Vicky's sheep will hear her voice. And your sheep will hear your voice because you're unique and different. And there will be people for you and people for me. And there are people for all of us. We just have to learn to use our voice, not copy what the upline says or does and pretend to be somebody you're not. No, you don't need to do that. Okay. All right. We're good so far. Let's move number one. Suddenly we got hundreds of prospects because of course those ads, right? That we had started really working for us when we called out people that we wanted because we asked for a key player in the city. So everybody and their mother wants to be a key player. And of course, most of them aren't qualified, but we got a few who were, see? And that's how we started that. So we got so many prospects, we had to develop a screening process. And that's what we started way back in the early days of the Waterfront. We had to develop a way to screen them because we had too many people who were completely, utterly unqualified, meaning they had no skill sets yet, sort of in the middle. I've done it a few times before. And then people who had just come off a company that had gone bankrupt. Who do you think we wanted first to sign up in our business? People who wanted it a lot, but had no experience, people with some experience or people who just came off a company that had gone bankrupt or out of business and they were looking as well. Who would we want here? Who would you want in your business? Oh, all over the place. I, we put them on Facebook all the time, free. I'll show you some at the end here. The people coming off a bankrupt company, right? But you don't get them if you don't ask for the key player. See? When you do a cattle call, anyone who wants to come, come on over. You can make a lot of money. Those people never show up. I never have answered one of those kind of ads. Never would. Why? I'm not a cattle. You know, when we sign up with somebody, usually we change their, their business. Because we don't stop. We're too dumb to stop. We just keep going until we figure it out. So we didn't have a screening process. So we had all these people going, oh, my gosh, we got hundreds of resumes. Because I asked for a resume also in the water filter company. Send resume. Why? I want to see what you've done. It's not a job job, but I want to see what you've done. What competitions have you done? What things have you volunteered for? You know, we look for things that make winners if they don't have experience in our particular industry. Okay, we got that? So we developed a diagnostic process, kind of like at the doctor's office. When you go and they don't know you, you say, oh, I don't feel really good. And the nurse sets you down and says, okay, honey, sit down. And then you fill out all these forms and you take all these blood pressure and the, you know, the chest pressure and you, I don't know what, they weigh you and they do all these things, right? That process, we developed that process so that we could find before we talk to people, they would give us this information. See, we had it all done by hand with carbon copies. In those days, they actually had carbon so the questions we asked were ones whose answers would help us choose the best candidates. Why? For a fast start. You want a fast start? You got to have people who have the skills and have the experience and who want to be part of your mission. Are we, are we good with this, Vic? We got everybody here? Are They're we dialed in. Okay. Too. We're dialed in. All right, good. Like how deep is the pain? Are the values aligned? What's the urgency? These are the kinds of things we had Quite a few questions, maybe 30 or 40, but these are the kinds of things that we ask, right? And I'll give you some social media examples from today where we did that. Uh, I wanted to be sure that you'd know that we've done this for so long, but people go, well, how's it going to work today? What about today? What are we going to about this? Bop, bop, bop. And I say, yep, yep, yep. I knew you were going to ask. So I, I have a Facebook a profile. And so I use that a lot to market. And so the other, about a month ago, in fact, I should show you that I don't, I don't, I didn't even think of it. I should have thought of it. I had a, made a post the other day about this session. And I think we have over 250 comments. My assistant who responded to many of you uh, with a private link in your PM got banned from Facebook for two days from making personal, sending personal B, uh, DMs to people, PMs to people. Because there were like over 200 people who said three moves. Give me the three moves. And all of those people signed up on our Zoom, which is what is we're experiencing right now. 
And so all those people gave their name and email address to me because they wanted to be part of this. And some of them, of course, didn't make it and they'll ask for the replays. So we ended up with like 200 leads of people who said, I want to know what your three moves were that got you from the beginning of your business to being a top recruiter in the last six companies you've been in over 30 years. Do y'all see that? So somebody said, how do you do it now? Well, there's a way we do it right now. You post something interesting on your wall, your Facebook wall. Now, don't think that all my stuff that I post gets 200 comments with requests. Some of the stuff gets five and some doesn't get any. And if I really feel bad about it that day, I just delete it. So you don't see it. But that one got like 200, 220 or so. So you want to know how to do it? Post stuff that calls out the people who need what you have. That's what you do. And you can, many of you came because of that. Okay. You see how that works? So here's another one. Uh, this is one where I was looking to help people in network marketing, which is what we're doing here. Okay. So this is a business one. And the Facebook ad had a picture of me in the restaurant last year. And it said, how to enroll people into your business. Okay. That was, that's what the, I said the post was about. I didn't know how many comments we would get. I just said, hey, how do we enroll people into your business? If you can't enroll new customers and reps, you have no business and no Momo. In the MLM world, they don't teach you this. I don't know why. What do they teach you in the network marketing world? Talk to people. How to talk to people. Why? Who cares? Let's enroll them. Let's get them on board for the mission of building, you know, a 100,000 member distribution network. Why not? That's how it works. What do you think cable TV is? Millions and millions of monthly users. That's what we want to do. That's what you want to do, right? Through local networks and th there are ways to do this. So I posted this on my Facebook profile post and got 133 comments saying, can I have the enroll link? Because I did a show like this. I said, if you want to see a live like this, we did a few weeks ago, uh, click enroll, say enroll. Okay, that's called the call to action, the CTA. So I did that. And people came. So you want to see how to do it? That's it right there. See? So here's an example of all these hundreds and hundreds. I just put one or two there so you'd see it, right? You see how this works? Tell me, yeah, you got it. Yeah. Okay. And so in the end, notice what the post is about. Is it about my product, my program? Yes or no? Let me see. What do you what do you say? Is the program, is the post about my program? What do we got? Nope. 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 What's it about? What's the program? What, what is the post about? There, let me show you again. What's the post about? Right. So there was a gal, Linda here, Cheryl, you said, I don't know how to find the right people to help my business. So if you saw a post like this, how to enroll people into your business, does that speak to the problem that you just said here that you had? I don't know how to find the right people to help my business. Linda, this is literally what you just said. I don't know how to find the right people to help my business. This post says, how to enroll people into your business. Is that a perfect match or not? What do you say? Yes or no? So it speaks to people that have a problem. What's the problem? I don't know how to enroll people into my darn business. This speaks to that. That's it. This is how you do it. Okay. And of those people, I think um, we didn't do any specials, right? We talked about the problem. People that have problems enrolling. Okay. So that's what we talked about. And I think we ended up, I don't know, with 15 or 20 new people into the business when Vicky enrolled them. Okay. Okay. Let me show you one other example. This is for product. Okay. This was for the business. This is a business type of it, right? Because what are we, what am I offering to do? You want to know how to enroll people into your business? That's recruiting, right? Now here's another example for a product that we ran. Um, this is for the product that's the, the, um, help people get off the daily pain meds. It's a way to get your pain kind of evaporated in 10 or 12 seconds. And instead of doing daily pain meds, we do something different. 
nothing even goes into the body. So here was the ad. You can, the, the ad, not the ad, the post. I'm not even paying for these. These are posts I put on my Facebook profile. One in three people take pain meds every day. That's just a fact, apparently, in the United States. Some want off. Some do. Not all. The dots have already saved thousands. Ask if you want off, too. I was really surprised about this because 36 people said, I saw a post of yours. I want to have off. I want to know what you've got. I have arthritis. I have this or that or the other. And can you respond? And it was like all this stuff. And so the diagnostic process, remember we talked about this before, we're going to include it right now. We created a diagnostic process for this. The series of questions that you get when you go from the nurse, when you go to the doctor's office, and they do all that stuff to see how best to recommend what you might do. We have that set up for this too. We Since the first business that I learned that, oh my gosh, I, this is not going to work. We have all these people and I don't know how to tell who, you know, like if you have tryouts for softball, some of the people have played a lot of softball. Those are the people you want on the team. Other people have never held a bat, but they're really interested in learning and trying and, you know, like that. So you have to decide for the team, who are you going to have play if you want to win? Now, if you're just letting people, you know, play to play, then it doesn't matter who you can use people for bases, you know, what have you. That's what people do, right? Here, you be third base. Okay, okay. At least you get to be on the field. Okay. So we had all these people who wanted this. And now I have a diagnostic process ready for this. Totally right there. All the question sets. So that some of those people make it through the question sets and get to Vicky. You haven't, let me show you how that's going to work. So this is how we did this. We ran an announcement, really. Ask if you want off too. That's what we got and 12 people enrolled this week. Are you with me so far? Do you see how this works that you put up announcements or statements or stories that describe a problem that you believe exists that you believe you can help with? See, to me, some of you may not care. One in three people take pain meds every day. So what? You may be somebody who doesn't care. I don't mind, but I'm looking for those who do. Some want off. Those are my sheep. Right there. See that? Some want off. Do you guys see that there? Those are my sheep. Is it everybody who's taking payments? No, but some. And we've got something ready that's helped thousands of people. No side effects because nothing goes in your body. You want to see or not? What do we care? Whoever says yes, we run them through the whole diagnostic first. Tell me yes to see what side they're going to fit on because some of them want to be help us with the mission and get the word out. And some people just want to be customers, right? You got it? Okay. All right. Okay. So that's for this one. So that required all this stuff that you see required that we make create move two. We got all these people coming in, just like I showed you before from the water filter days. We had all these kind of people coming in here too. 132 comments. What are you kidding me? 32 people saying, I want, I want, gimme, gimme, gimme. So what are we going to do? So guess what? We, that move to was basically creating a diagnostic process, which we started with a water filter company and have to this day done with all six companies we've built to the top. Okay. The diagnostic process. So that is move number two, a diagnostic process to help us choose of the people who were coming in. Even if we had only three applicants, we put them through the process to choose the best one. Based on our criteria, not their criteria. No. Skills, experience, values, urgency, you know? So then over the years, we automated this whole diagnostic process. I have wanted to automate it for so many years. I told Vicky, God, Vic, I got to figure out. And so in 19... I mean, in 2000, the beginning of 2000, I, I went through 12 or 13 different uh, full stack developer coders to automate this diagnostic process. And after three years, we finally got it together. And now it's completely automated, customized for whatever a person is doing, whether it's a, you know, a nutritional company or whether it's an internet marketing company, whether you're looking for customers or whether you're looking for recruits, we, we have, it's... We have automated this and customized it. 
and we have people to talk to every single day. Okay. So you're, you, so then one day we had people to talk to, and it was about the time that I was marketing something called strategic advisor. Inviter was one of our first higher ticket programs. It was $4,995, which is not all that high ticket in today's world. High ticket today is like $100,000 or $75,000. Russell Brunson, some of you know him, know his name. We've been friends for many years. He charges $150,000 for a year to be in his mastermind. And it's maxed out with 100 people. Are they all rich? No. But they pay him $150,000 for the year. Why? Because they expect they're going to make a million five hundred thousand. They expect they're going to make 10 times more. It's a business. You're not buying keto machines or you're not buying uh, video games. You're not buying a car that goes 30% down value when you drive it off the lot. This is, you're talking about not Dave Ramsey with your, with if you just have a job, you shouldn't borrow big money because how are you going to pay it back? But you're talking about a business like Elon borrowed almost all the money to buy Twitter. Why? Because he expects to turn it into something that will be worth 10 times that. And the people who invest believe that too. They may be wrong, but that's the nature of business. You invest to multiply your money. It's not invest in a car and then it drops 20% or in your video machine or television set. Do you all know the difference between investing because you want it to multiply in a business versus borrowing money for your car? Or for a video game that drops in value the minute you do it? Who is anybody, is everybody clear about that? Say me. Business borrowing. Well, you're not buying an asset. Uh, when you buy a program, you are buying a possibility of learning a path that will multiply your income. An asset is buying stock, equities. Like I own some Tesla stock. Totally fun when it goes up and totally crazy when it goes down. So this is not like investing in an equity like stock. You are investing in, in your attempt to multiply that money you're being given or that you're, that you're putting in. Like say you invest in our program. I invest in programs. Huh? When I do, if I give somebody 25 grand, it's believing 100% that I can turn that into 25,000 within six months. That's my belief. If I learn these things and implement them, I'll be able to do that. That's what I think. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. But that's why I invest. So it's not like an asset where you hold it like Apple stock and maybe you get some dividends. This is one, if, if it's your business, you're going to do stuff. You need that money so you can eat and stay alive so you can spend all your time building. And in a year or so, you want to be able to say, or two years, I have that money invested and it's now totally repaid and I'm making money 10 times more or five times more than I would have without it. Do you all understand that? In a business, you're, you, you invest in order to multiply. Okay. Not talking about stock. You know, it's you, you and your team that you're going to be doing this. All right. So we had people to talk to. So then one day I had this $5,000 program, Strategic Inviter, which we maxed out at 100 people because I didn't want to have any more. And I thought, you know, I was doing a lot of these enrollment calls myself. And they were very short. My enrollment calls are also really short. Here, go to the page. Because by the time they come to me, they've been pre-qualified, right? And it's like, do I, should I really have to do this personally? Because if they're well enough qualified, then if somebody were there who knows the core of the program, who's been through the mill, who realizes that we don't want the wrong people, that we have to say, no, <laughs> probably not something that you should do. Who could do that with empathy and caring and yet, you know, be the person that somebody can look up to? So I told Vic, Vic, listen, maybe we should try to have an experiment and I'll do the marketing, get the people ready and you know, do all the diagnostic procedures. We'll have this all done because it took all these years, right? And then when they're done and they pop out of the ready to go, you get them and you do the enrollment procedure, which she knew as well as I because we've been doing it together for many years. We understand very well how not to bring in the wrong people. So she goes, well, Vicky's very, you know, you think I could? So, well, if you didn't, I wouldn't know, right? You just say they were a loser. So we could just try it. 
and see how it works. And then she said, well, if there are all these people and we have all this stuff, then maybe, you know, I should be ready to say no first, right? You want me to be ready to say no first. Yeah, I should be ready. So the minute Vicky got it together that, oh, we're going to find people who really can help us as recruiters, right? And who really are of the same mind, similar mindset on why we want the benefits of the product. We didn't do the clean water together, but we did fruits and veggies together. We're doing this alternative to pain meds together. We, we've done the card company together. We're number one in that company. They had a company-wide recruiting contest. In our first six months, we we're number one. And that's last thing Vicky did is put some guy in who put us over the top. Remember, Vic? Oh, yeah. It's like... <laughs> So it was kind of scary for me because I thought, oh, what am I going to, you know, and then she was kind of scared and we were both kind of scared. And you know how they say, are you going to do it? And you're scared. And the answer is you, you just do it scared. Yeah. You do it scared and just have the toilet close by. So in case you have to run a lot and then pretty soon you'll be empty and then you do it scared again, you do it scared again. So that's what we did. We tested this for the last, what, four companies <laughs> We got pretty good at it now. So I would do the marketing. Which marketing? Right here. Post like this. See that? That's marketing post. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That was, you know, pretty, pretty straightforward there. <clears throat> so I would do that and the diagnostic process. Right? And then who was going to go into the doctor's office here with all the information that she needs about these people, people who pass. We make people pass. Why? Because I don't want people who are just eights or nines. I want tens. Why? Because we want to build fast. See? Wally Kralik. My gosh. It's, I'm just as somebody I've known for so many years. Wally, how are you, buddy? All right. So, and then she would enroll them if there were a match. And that's what we do right now. And Vicki usually accepts about eight of ten of the people that she chats with for any program we have. High ticket, medium ticket, and the alternative to pain meds program. And you've done it. Vic, how many years have you done this with us? Oh, like I said, how can I count back? It was quite a while, four companies. And it's yeah. I don't you don't have to go for no anymore because they're pre they're sorted and sifted out. And by the time they come to you, they're qual they're pre-qualified. And they're just a match. <laughs> Sometimes they have to go back and figure out some finances, but they come back and they're lovely. They're ready. They have skill yeah. sets. And it's just the most delicious way to do business where you save your sanity <laughs> and you enjoy yourself as well. That yeah. is the truth of it. I wouldn't give this up for anything. Nobody could make me give this process up, Kim. Yeah, and it's the people who come into it enjoy it mm -hmm. also. Yes. They often say, we so enjoyed this whole process. And so that's what you want. So nobody has that icky move. So now, this is move number three here. Separate the marketing, the diagnostic, and the actual enrollment. This is how we build everything now. See how that works? Tell me, yes, you got it. Any questions, Vic, so far? And this is why we talk about this. I don't know how many of you have ever seen this verse. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. I tell you this because of the results that we've gotten. Mm -hmm. And it's been every advance has come with 10 step backwards. Every advance. You look at anyone who's achieved anything. You know, in our industry, this is something I have always never, never understood. Um, one of my very first sponsors uh, and a lady that I helped this a few years ago, they would say, oh, he's making him half a million dollars per month. Okay. And he says, oh, I used to be a waiter. Yeah. I used to be a waiter. And now I drive by the other waiters in my Ferrari. And it's like. You used to be, well, I heard that story and I thought, well, crap, if he can do it. I mean, I went to Harvard and he can't even tuck in his shirt and his English isn't so good. Of course, we're now old friends now, but that's what he said. One day I was at the company event because I had hit the top spot also. So then, of course, you get to meet everybody and find out what's really going on behind the scenes. 
And so I said to him, so what is your story? Surely you didn't just come out of the waiter routine and then you made, you know, 90,000 a month, 100,000 a month. You know, he's the top producer in that company today. I said, "How? Well, what is the story there? Because I expected it was last month that he was a waiter, maybe last year, right? But it wasn't. It was years ago. Years ago, he was a waiter. And now he's like 30. He was a waiter when he was like 17 or something, like Mike Dillard, you know? Like, really? So then what happened? Well, it turns out he was born into a network marketing company. His father was a top producer in one of the main companies in, on the world, in the world, still today. And he was born into a family that did nothing but network marketing, and they were top producers, and they went to all the events his entire life. And he was part of that network of people. Well, are you going to tell me you were just a waiter? I asked him, well, why do you do this to people? Yeah, so you were a waiter, you know, in a previous life. What is wrong with saying that you skilled up and that you did these things and you don't have a Harvard degree? Yes, but that you get experience. Why not value the things that you've acquired and achieved all this time? And now he does. We had a gal, um, you know, and she was top producer in her company. And number one, I mean, million dollar a year uh, gal. And her, her story was, you know, I'm just like this blonde gal who, you know, blah, blah. I said, okay, just forget. What's the story here with you? Well, I had a, you know, they had a medical business and I sold the medical business for nearly a million dollars. And what was your role in the medical business? Well, I talked to people and helped them phys physically do whatever they needed to, to do. And the business she was in was a health business. Now, do you suppose it helped her that she had 20 years of confidence building up a business of her own in the health business, like a doctor type person, when she talked about a, um, a health type product that she was marketing? Do you suppose that she might have had a little more confidence than you would if you just yesterday decided to do this business? Yes or no? What do you think? You see, and so they don't tell that. Everybody wants you to think they just fell off the boat yesterday. No. Most of the people that are in this industry have that have made amounted to anything have been in 10 or 20 years. They just don't tell you that because they want you to think it's easy, anyone can do it, and it's fast and quick, and no business is fast and quick. Why? Because you have to get other people to cooperate with you. It's not like going to the gym yourself. No. Somebody else has to say, oh, that's a cool idea. And think of the options and give you or your company money for what you're doing. It takes two to tango. That's why it takes a little time to learn it. And if you won't give yourself the time to learn it, you won't be any good at it. That's all. It's not easy to make money. That's why most people have jobs. Why? Because that the pain of a job is less painful than not knowing how to make money because nobody taught you right. Have we, have we, have, got it? Okay, so that's why we talk about this. We cannot help talking about what we've seen and heard, both for our products and our businesses. Let me tell you, if you do not feel this about your business, you probably will not succeed. Okay, I'm just letting you know. Those are the three moves. Now, let me tell you something else that I wanted to be sure and share before we um, before we end. Um, there's one other thing that you really should know. And I'm going to tell you now I, that I've learned, and it, it's not something that you can do anything about in other people, okay? When they come to you, there's really nothing you can do about it. You can try, but chances are you won't succeed. You want to know what that is? Who wants to know? What's the one special thing that you really cannot change in other people? Right here. You want to seek people who already identify with what you're doing. You see? We look for people who are on pain meds and want to get off, or who have somebody in their life on pain meds and they want to help them get off, or somebody who wants to learn how to build a network marketing, a channel of hundreds and thousands of distributors by calling out the people you want in the first place, customers and reps. That if you identify with that, you're one of ours. You're our person. 
But if you're still looking for a quick, 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 and can I do it in an hour a day if I'm still watching TV and doing a little Facebook, uh, you're not a person. Why we can't help you, right? So you want to have people who are already identified with what you're doing. That means that what your product benefits or the business benefits are an extension of who they already are, you know? So the purpose of the product fits them or the purpose of the business uh, fits them because they love having a business of their own. We have a group of people in this current group with us who their whole business is one of the groups in there runs a, an organization of people and they all want to have seven streams of income. Okay, so if you are part of a group that says the goal is seven streams of income, do you think that those kind of people will have some, they already kind of identify with the idea of having a stream of income that comes from other people giving you money? Yes or no? Yes or no? Right? So you ask for those people. And let me tell you, the people like that look forward to overcoming the obstacles so they can achieve what they want because they know they'll be the only ones to do it. If an obstacle, you kind of, oh, they said, no, I'm not doing this. No problem. But don't do a business like this because that's part of the deal. You have to find the ones. My sheep hear my voice. Not all sheep. Jesus didn't get them all either. He only got 12 while he was here. So if you find it in your heart, I really don't want to learn how to find the people, then it's totally fine to not do a business like this. There are a million things you can do to make money. Don't feel like you need to do this, honest. It really, you know, you, you have to look forward to overcoming the obstacles so that you can get what you want. So be in something where that can be true for you, okay? So are there, do we have people here? who would like to know how you could work more close, closely with us to do that. We have, we have a business and we show people how to do this. And if you would like to know how we can help you, I will show you a couple of options right now. And then you can, for those of you, one or two of you might want to come with us. So who would like to see that, see what the options are? Okay, it's very quick, actually. Two slides, I think we have. We have a high ticket and a mid ticket offer. And the high ticket offer is not a uh, hundred grand or 150,000 like Brussels. It's actually 15,000. And we have some options. So you ask Vicky, this is a HTO is high ticket offer, the six figure advisor. We take, you know, just a few people for that every month because that's all we have time for. And then we have a mid ticket offer, reverse relationship marketing. And that, offer right now is a one day workshop. We're going to learn how to do all this stuff. It's a mid ticket offer. So talk to Vic and see which one of those you're in for. The higher ticket offer, the difference between the six figure advisor offer and the um, reverse relationship marketing offer. Number one, the reverse relationship marketing is in one day. It's a one day, big one day workshop. Uh, and the six-figure advisor gives you a lot more personal guidance as you come along. So it's kind of like when you go to the big football game or the baseball game, if you sit in the bleachers, it's going to cost you, I don't know, 50 bucks a seat or $100. If you sit in the middle, it might cost you 500 And if you sit right in the front row so you can see the center line on the football field, it probably costs you, I don't know, 2500 bucks or $5,000. But you're all seeing the same thing. In one case, you're up close and personal. And in the other case, you're a little bit further back, but you get all the information and we come with you to do the class live. Okay, it's a one day thing. So that's what we have for you. So what are the three moves? Call out who you can help, who can help you or who you can help. That's called marketing. So it's not everybody, right? Number two, diagnostic screening process by hand or automated. And we, we have automated ours. And for those of you that do the six figure advisor, you get your own automated one custom. If you don't, you learn how to you learn what the question sets are that you can just ask them. Uh, and number three is we separate marketing from the actual enrollment calls so that there's not that much uh, stress on either of the parties. Does that make sense? Tell me, yes, you got that. All right. So Vic, this is, Vic, put your text number in here, if you would. right there in chat. Do you want to handwrite that down? 
you know, for when this goes away, you can just text me, it'll show right up. It's right next to me and I'll see who's first in order to want to chat. Yep, what you want to do is pop in there and get yourself first in, in line here for that. And then you can we can see which program might be best uh, for you. And of course, there's always ways to finance programs like this. But the question that you want to ask yourself is, like, I mean, I'll tell you, one of the reasons that I've always liked the, the, the business model of network marketing is because a person doesn't have to come up with a product themselves. You don't have to be a carpenter or, you know, come up with lipstick yourself or, I mean, we have programs, but when you find a product in a, that you can represent, like a pharmaceutical rep, they represent pharmaceutical companies. We are not right, right now repping a product line that to me solves a very significant problem for human beings that have uh, that are otherwise very intelligent. They're overloaded on daily pain meds, which is affecting kidneys, affects um, liver, it affects your digestion, it affects your ability to focus. And a lot of smart people are not aware of that until they get a checkup and they discover that their liver is screwed up or their kidneys are screwed up or they can't, or they get fat. You know, daily meds make you fat. You may not know this, but it does. So we really care about solving that problem for people who want off. And then to build a distribution network around the world of people that help people who want off the daily meds, which are so debilitating and so dependent making, that is who our people are for that business, you see? And if you feel that way about what the, what the product is that, that you've got, that it can really help people and that there are people out there who could benefit from it, uh, then you'd wanna get into one of these programs to learn how to market it. And again, you know, if you think, oh, that's like a lot of work, I don't know anybody. If those, if your mind shuts you down kind of, just take a break, don't do it. Nobody says you have to do this, not your upline, not your sister, nobody. Find something that makes your heart go, oh, I can't wait to get up and think about how to do this. Every time I do one of these things, I think, I wonder what I could teach them that they don't know. How could I surprise them? Why? To find the ones that are out there who want to make a difference. Somebody found Elon. Somebody found Steve Jobs. Somebody found me. Somebody found Vicky. So your sheep are waiting to hear your voice. And if you know that, then you want to learn how to do the marketing, learn how to call them out, learn how to use a diagnostic procedure, and then separate the functions. And none of that will be anything you have, have learned anywhere else. So you don't talk about it. You just do the thing and shut your mouth. When your volume starts to grow, the upline is going to say, hey, what are you doing? Yeah, I'll tell you, the first company, the water filter company, where the lady said, why don't you try recruiting the way you do your real estate recruits? I did that. And she said, you, nobody's going to come, you know, when, with that to that ad. She said, nobody's going to come because, and I said, why not? And she said, well, because nobody wants to do public speaking. That's, they want that worse than death, right? And um, I guess Jerry Seinfeld had a joke. He said, at the funeral, people would say they would rather be in the funeral casket than give the eulogy. That's how much people don't want to speak in public. So I told her, well, listen, if somebody comes, they will know how to speak. And that will take care of 10 people. I would have to then not train and beg and plead. Oh, come on, you can speak. Oh, come on, you can do it. No, they already come and they can do it. That person to me is worth 10 people that can't. And so they came and we found people who learned how to speak. Vicky needed some I think a gin and tonic, was that it, what you needed <laughs> to get you going? <laughs> right. It or Bailey's or something. But yeah, now here she is, is, right? But the people that we, before I met Vic, they were public, they could speak. Yeah. And so I could say, here, this is the thing, do this. And they got up and did a show. Do you know how much time that saves me? If one of your people can talk to 30 or 50 people and you are at the back of the room, Zoom or otherwise, and you go, you know, that's one of mine. How would that make you feel? That's one of yours doing that. It's not you doing that. Yeah, see? What's the distribution cost? Yeah, talk to Vic. 
It depends totally on what it is. It, you know, what you want to do is ask yourself, what's the cost of staying on the pain meds to your body and your health? If you don't mind that, then go ahead and, you know, a person can just stay on the pain meds all the time. People do. And they have all kinds of physical ailments for which they get more pharmaceutical drugs. So it's a question of, the question isn't how much is it? The, the question is more, how much is it if you don't change? And if a person doesn't want to change, I feel it's not going to make any difference what it costs. They won't do it. But if a person says, I don't want the kidney liver issues, I don't want to have digestive issues. You know, I don't want to get fat. I don't want to become dependent. You know, th what th does it cost if you stay that way? Then the cost of this is quite small. It's not even a hundred bucks a month. Okay. So remember, the cost is always relative to what happens if you stay the way you are for everything. Okay. What happens if you stay the way you are? Well, I don't really care. Well, then the cost doesn't matter. You wouldn't buy it anyway because you wouldn't even do it. Are you are you good with that? Okay. Okay, so anybody have any questions about all this? I was going to give you the fly story of the doomed fly, but I wanted to be sure that you see what the three moves are. I presented them all to you here and they were developed over the last, you know, 20, 25 years. But here they, this is what we do exactly right now. And if you could have a system set up like this, what would it be worth to you? Let's say in a year you get it all set up and working or six months you get it set up and working. Or if you get into one of the programs, you get it done in a month or two. And then you start the promotion. So far, we primarily post on Facebook, Facebook profile. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. Okay. Any other questions? Do you guys have any questions for me? These are the three. Yep. Who here markets something that they absolutely are crazy about? That they believe really can make a big... Who's on a scale of one to 10? Who's a 10 here on what it is that you market? One to 10. Who's a 10? Ian? Deb? Barb? Barb, have you gotten with Vic? You know, you should get with her and maybe do our little day thing, April 19th. That's mid-ticket. Totally within what you can do. I know you, girl. From long ago. At 12? Okay, so Carol, what does your your thing, whatever it is, don't tell me what it is, what does it do for somebody? Like, let me, yeah, this would be good practice. 16, huh? Okay, 15. Yeah, it's a good practice. If I were to, let me give you the model for you. You know, the, somebody says, so what do you market? Well, we help people who notice, right? We help people who um, are on daily, uh, have aches and pains every day. And so they have, they're on daily pain meds, right? So help people that have aches and pains every day and they have daily pain meds, but they'd like to see if they can get off because, you know, they know about the side effects. That's what we do. What do you do? Okay. That's it. The end. Over. That's a call. A call for the person I can help. It's like a dog whistle. The only ones who will hear it and respond are those who go, yeah, that's me. Out of 10 people, that'll be one. Do I care? No, because I have one up. Cue them up. A couple, two, three like that. Send them to Vic and she'll sign up eight out of 10. The key is calling who you can help in a very clear way so my sheep hear my voice. All of you have sheep. That's the key. But you got to have something that really can help people. Okay, I will then give you the doom fly story. How many of you know about this story, the doom fly? How many of you have ever seen a fly on your windowsill? There isn't one today, but there was one a couple of weeks ago. And they go, bzz, 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 right? The doom fly. This guy, Ken Pritchett, wrote a book called U Squared. And he says, he went on vacation to his cabin and he says, you know, I'm listening to the desperate sounds of a life or death struggle going on a few feet away. Because he was sitting like I am at, at my computer and the window was right there. And he had an open door, front door to his uh, cabin, right on the other side of him. Because it was just two rooms. And he says, and I hear this fly and I see him and he's trying harder and harder and harder. You know how the flies 
and they drop and then they get up again and then they drop. Has anyone ever had that? You ever seen the fly buzzing against the wall, against the window? Tell me yes if you have. Who's seen that? Who's seen that before? Let's see if we got somebody, right? And he can try and try and try. And if he doesn't fly away from that window, out the door, what's going to happen to the fly? What's going to happen to the fly? What do you think? What happens to all of them when they keep doing the same thing and they think it's right, but it isn't working? If they don't change, if the fly doesn't change what it does, what's going to happen to it? They die. And that's what happens to us as humans. We think we're supposed to talk to more people. We think we should talk louder to more people. You know, in years ago, when, when I first went to MIT, I got a, I got a side gig at MIT teaching um, Chinese business students how to speak English. And the, the teacher for that, that I was replacing, was somebody who, you know, was American English speaker. And she would, when the students didn't respond right away, she would talk louder. And I would tell her, uh, you know, it's not that they have hearing <laughs> trouble. They're not having a deaf problem. <laughs> it's they don't understand the words yet. They haven't got the vocabulary yet. So you probably don't need to yell louder. And it's a very normal tendency when you think people don't get it, that you need to talk louder. But it really isn't. That's not the problem. <laughs> no amount of loud talk is going to make them understand words that they haven't learned yet, see? And so you have to change how you do it so that learning actually goes on or that a change happens. That's the same here. You know, if you're wanting to do the same thing because your upline's telling you, fine. You may die in the process. That means you, you may just drop out of the business and you didn't have to. The other way is to look at something and say, if this isn't working, what else could I do? If you don't have any ideas, you can come to us. We've got full of crazy ass ideas that we have used to test new things. And that's how Steve Jobs does it. It's how Elon Musk does it. How do you think they do these things? They don't buy the status quo of talk to everybody until that you crazily drive them all away. You don't. You only talk to the people about the business that have been completely pre-qualified. You call them out, you did the diagnostic, and they say, yes, 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 I'm ready. That's who we talk to. That's it. So there's no suffering of being rejected. They weren't the right ones in the first place. Like you going shopping for shoes or 5,000 pairs of shoes in Nordstrom's. If you're a woman, the guy's going to say, who are you buying for? You, your husband, or your kids? Why? To eliminate all the wrong choices. Well, I'm shopping for me, okay, and I want running shoes. Okay, that's 80% of the store is gone. No men, everything but running. I want running, I want Nike. Okay, that's like 90% gone. And now I want size eight and I want white. By the time you have specified who you want, the guy brings you three, four pairs of shoes, you try them on and you buy one and you go home. That's what we do. That's it. All right, Vic, if you got your name on the list to talk to Vicky, we are set to go. Yeah, they died. Hey, John, how are you, buddy? And Carol, you have it. Ian, you have it. You want to check with and Lisa, you guys. This is your chance to do something totally different. Totally, totally different. And if this resonates with you, connect with Vic because you're the only ones who get into the classes. Okay. All right, Vic, any other questions? Oh, FYI, Kim, you know, there's like two or three spots left for your April workshop. So I've got several texts coming in. So if you, if you want to be in chat with me today, we're close to. Oh, that's right. We're almost full up on that one. Up. Right. Yeah. So it's 15 because I give you personal help in that one. So if you want the one day mid ticket offer, tell Vicki that you want that. That's on April 19. And of course, you get the recordings and you will have a signature message. And we'll show you how to market it. So you have all the pieces, give you your diagnostic questions. So you have that. And then you'll be able to go out and do it and start the process, start the practicing of the thing. You know, like tennis, they learn to teach you how to do backhand and then you have to practice and you have to practice until you get it really down. Does that work? Mm -hmm. All right. And Carol's asking, Miss will we get information through the messenger chat? Carol, you could text me and I'll get with you. 
And then why don't you text her right now? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. And there's my text number right inside. Do yeah. it again, Vic. Do, do the text right number again. There at the bottom, but you know, there it is twice. <laughs> it's right there in chat and it's right there on the image. So Carol, go ahead and give me a text. I've done it. Yeah, there yep. it is. And just remember, we will give you the strokes, but then who has to practice on the tennis court to get really good? Tell me who has to practice. I can give you the strokes and be your teacher. Vicki can be your teacher. Who has to practice the strokes to get really good? Right? Who has to practice serving to get really good? Who has to practice swimming in the pool to get really good? All right. I right, connect with Vic and she'll get you your information the way we, yeah, we do Norman. Yeah. Right. It's kind of like, can you do push-ups for somebody else? What do you think? <laughs> That's good. I wish. <laughs> but yeah, you see what happens that. is once you know that you're on a path and you're doing your own push-ups, your mm -hmm. body is the one that's going to look hot in a month or two months. Right. right? But the push-ups, yeah, the Buddha said, I can give you the path, but you have to tread the path. I can show you the way to become the next Rocky. But if you want to be the next Rocky, you have to be in the gym and running up and down all those stairs, all those days for all those months and weeks and years, however long it took him to get that good. You know, Tesla has now been around for 20 years. They are so far ahead of other companies that want to have electric cars. Nobody has a chance. So putting in the time means that you get a chance to overcome obstacles that nobody else has overcome, which means that you get the benefits of having done that, which are people coming to you that want what you have, that want to be partners and want to make a change in this world, marketing what you've got. Does that sound good? And that's what you're looking for. Because anytime if you're feeling like, oh, I don't want to spend the time, don't do a business. Because it will require time or you just invest in other people. Let them do the work. You know, that's the way, you know, you cannot get away from doing the work and developing yourself unless you hire all the people, which you can do by just investing in another company. Yeah. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who is now 75, he, um, we have a little video of him and uh, somebody came to him in the gym because he used to work out a lot at Venice Beach in Southern California at the gym there. And um, they said, well, you've already done like, I don't know, 300 sit-ups and 400 push-ups and, and he does these weightlifting things, you know. And somebody says, well, how come you're doing so many? And he said, well, I have to do more because I have to be the best in the world. So I got to be the best in the world so i have to do enough to be the best in the world if you don't feel like you need to practice and learn how to do this enough to be the best in the world uh you're probably not going to get very far find something where that is you're so anxious to get good at what you do so that the payoff of having thousands of people in your business all over the world benefiting from your product and a few of those people being giant distributors for what you do. If that's the goal, you want to say, that is part of what I have brought to this world. That's how I've contributed. Then you want to learn how to do this. If you resonate with this stuff. Okay. All right. I think we're good to go, Vic. What do you say? My yeah. pleasure. Got a, a flood of text. So Okay, good. Well, I'll let you get to it. Thank right. you guys for coming. And we'll see you maybe next time.